Welcome TLC family. Well, how many of you have kids, right? I know a lot of us watching probably do, um, you know, and I'm just, I'm just so happy. TLC Avenel is growing with babies and children. And, you know, I just, um, the other day was visiting one of our members who had a beautiful baby girl. It's so cute, so exciting. Um, but our family is growing and that's awesome. But I was thinking about being a parent and um, really the trust that your child has in you, right? If you've ever maybe taught your kid to swim or jump into a pool or whatever, and you say, come on, come on, I've got you, I've got you. Um, whether you're the daddy saying, come on, daddy's got you, or the mama, come on, I'm gonna catch you. You know, they just have this, this trust, right? They know that you, that there's security with you being there. I think about, you know, my baby Eliana, she's just three months old, but uh, sometimes she just, and she might be a little spoiled, I will say that, I'll admit that, but um, she just wants me to hold her, right? And she's kind of fussy or upset, but then I pick her up and I just cuddle her and she's like, ah, oh, she relaxes. She knows that mama's there, that I'm gonna take care of her, right? Even at three months old. And so, you know, I'm calling today's lesson, Daddy's Got You. Um, because I think about, you know, the trust that a child has for their parents, their father, their mother, and then the way that God wants us to trust Him. You know, we've been talking the last few lessons about um, really being free from anxiety, from depression, from fear, and all of those things that would try to afflict us um, mentally and emotionally. And uh, we talked about last week from Isaiah, we looked at several verses that were all pointing to the work of Christ, to what Jesus would do for us and how he bore that on our behalf, that he bore griefs and sorrows and sicknesses and pains. And, you know, he really, part of his salvation for us. It was a, a total, complete package, right? Salvation included a sound mind, included power and love and not fear, right? We were talking last time about the power suit, how we can resist fear instead, put on the power suit and the love shirt and the sound mind hat, because that's what he's paid for us to have and partake of every single day. And so as we think about, you know, God is our father and knowing that he is a perfect father, that he loves us unconditionally, that he loves us no matter what, he's got us. That should bring peace and security, right? Let's look at um, Luke 12, 32. Jesus is teaching here. Luke 12, 32 says, do not fear little flock. For it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Jesus is teaching here and says, don't fear, guys. Little flock who's taken care of by the shepherd, right? Don't fear. Why? Because it's your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Because daddy wants to give you everything you need and some. He wants to provide for you right? He's made this spiritual provision that can overflow into our natural lives, that covers, you know, our need for shelter and food and our family and our job and all of those things that really the salvation that happened on the inside, he wants us to work out, right? To experience everything that he's paid for now here in this life every moment of our life, for it to be blessed, for it to be, for you to be successful, uh, for you to be at peace, right? For there to be calmness in your mind and in your life and in your circumstances. That's what he wants. So Jesus said, don't fear guys, because your father, he wants to provide all of these things. He, it's his good pleasure, it says. It's your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. It makes him happy to provide for you everything that you need. It makes him happy. You know, think about your own children and, and how it just delights your heart to provide for them, 
right? Like you want to see them in nice clothes. You want to see them, you know, maybe even with the food in the household. I know that's kind of my role in our household is planning the meals and thinking about, okay, what do the kids like to eat? And, you know, how can I provide for them in this way? And then what will they want to pack for their lunch the next day? And I think about all of those things, right? And I desire, it's my good pleasure to meet those needs and have them, you know, eat health, good, healthy food that they enjoy. Um, and so just think about how much more the father, right? In fact, um, in Matthew 7, 9 through 11, it talks about that. Jesus is again teaching here and he says, or what man is there among you who, if his son asks for bread, will he give him a stone? Think about that, right? If my kids are like, hey, mom, what's for supper? I'm hungry. And I'm like, oh, go eat some gravel from outside. I'm not cooking tonight. No, right? That's not going to happen. I'm going to say, okay, I'm making tri-tip tonight or whatever we're making. Uh, and Jesus says, you know, you wouldn't do this as a natural parent. Give, make your kids eat a stone. You want to give them that bread. And then it says, or he, if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent? If they say, oh, can I have a fish? I, I don't know, maybe the context here is for eating or as a pet, you know, most likely for eating in this, con in this time frame. But um, they ask for something that they need for sustenance or that they want. And instead you give them a serpent, you give them something dangerous that would hurt them. No, you wouldn't do that as a parent. And it says, if you then being evil or natural is also that word, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask? It said the father wants to give you good things, even more than a natural parent wants to provide for their own children, things that are safe, things that are you know good for nourishment and healthy and all of that kind of thing. How much more Father God? And I love this because it corrects a lot of really strange thinking that, you know, God is out to get you and that he might allow horrible things in your life that'll hurt you, but there's going to be a silver lining somewhere because he's trying to make you stronger. No, that would be like the Father God giving us the serpent, right? Saying, oh, here's something horrible and dangerous, but just, you know, just work through it because I've got a plan for you and you will have a testimony later when you're all damaged and traumatized. No, right? That is horrible. But yet so many believers think that, that you know, anything that happens in their life, good or evil is from God. This is the good things are from God, not the evil. He's not bringing you dangerous things into your life to just make you a little bit stronger. No, that's the enemy's desire. The enemy wants to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I've come to give you life and life more abundantly. He wants those good things. The Father gives good gifts. It's his good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Daddy's got you, right? He's got you. And I love that we can't even mess it up. Think about the story of the prodigal son, right? Or Pastor Luke likes to call it the story of the loving father. How the son really disrespected his father and took, you know, his inheritance and squandered it, just wasted it. The father probably worked hard to provide that inheritance for the son, right? But it was all wasted. It was all gone. But when the son needed the father, right? And started, took a step to come back. What did the father do? He, well, he ran to him. Whew, this is so good, guys. He welcomed him with open arms, hugged him, kissed him, gave him the robe, gave him the ring, had the feast for him. The kid did not deserve it, right? And the father might have even, you know, had the memories of being rejected and being dishonored, but it didn't matter. His love, his love for the son, his love for the kid just superseded any wrong. And that's the way Father God sees us, guys. Unconditional love. Maybe you messed up yesterday or today, right? Maybe you've already made a mess of things today. But just run to the Father. He loves you so much. 
and he wants to make everything right. He wants to give you those good gifts. He wants to help turn that mess that you made around for your good and, uh, and just make everything right. That's what he's there for. Can we just, just trust him as our father? Trust that daddy's got us, that when we jump to him, when we run to him, he just holds us in his arms of love. That's what he wants for you. Let's read one more verse. Romans 8, 15 says, For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption, by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. He's adopted us. He wants us to look to him as our Abba, Father, our Daddy, and not receive the spirit of bondage and fear. That's not us. We resist that. And we turn to our Father and let Him just take care of it all. Amen? You know, I brought up last lesson, the God of peace. And I was looking through, you know, just doing a little study in the New Testament of how many times, you know, God is called the God of peace over and over again in the New Testament. Over and over, He's called the God of peace, not the God of fear not the God of worry, not the God of torment, but the God of peace. That's who He is to us. He is our peace who's broken down the middle wall of separation. There's nothing that stands between us and God. He looks past faults and mistakes. Jesus took care of all of that on the cross. He paid for sin past, present, and future. And so we, we come to Jesus and just say yes to his free gift of justification. All of that is taken care of. And Father God just wants to be there to supply every need, to take care of every problem. And so let's just look to him today, church. Let's just understand that Daddy, he's got us. We're in his arms. And no matter what you're facing, let's just turn to him. Let's just talk to him about it. Just let him take care of it. Let him show us, you know, steps to take today. If there's something to be said or done, he can show you that. You don't have to figure it out on your own. You don't have to stress about it and let it go round and round in your mind. No, we can just take it to daddy today, our Abba Father, because he loves you so much. Have a blessed day.